Are you a retro gamer who wants to start using RGB SCART cables, or maybe even start using arcade boards via super guns, but you keep hearing safety voltage warnings, and you don't want to have to spend hundreds of dollars on test equipment? Well, what if I told you there was now an oscilloscope, about $30, that will absolutely get the job done? Come take a look at this thing with me. Before we begin, a few disclaimers. First, this video isn't sponsored and I bought this with my own money. I'll post affiliate links in the description because that's how this channel is just barely able to stay afloat. But as always, this is an honest review that reflects my knowledge and opinion, at least at the time of this recording. Next, and much more importantly, I need to stress that I'm testing this cheap little scope in the context of being a diagnostic tool, not a development tool. I'm confident recommending this just to make sure you're not going to blow out your TV or scalers, but if you're developing products, I'd absolutely recommend getting the Rigel scope many of us in this scene use. Lastly, this video is going to skip right to the examples and show some common test scenarios. If you'd like more of a background on why these are the tests we perform, and a lot more info on each, please check out the previous videos I've done. Okay, let's get started. One of the most common questions I get is regarding the sync signal in an RGB SCART cable. So let's take a look at how to use this scope to test. We're going to do this without a display connected since we want to make sure the voltage is safe to use. Start by opening the SCART head. You'll want to reference the SCART pinout to see which pins to test, but sync is a pretty easy one to find. Next, grab the alligator clips that came with the scope and connect them to each end of a 75 ohm resistor. This will add a load to the signal that mimics what would happen when you connect it to a display. You can solder it all in if you'd like, but I'm going to show this method. The only thing to note is try not to touch the metal on the resistor or SCART head, as your body will change the resistance. Maybe just add some tape to the resistor legs and leave the end sticking out, then only touch the taped part. Now, power on the scope and console. Press the auto button on the scope, and then touch one of the resistor legs to the ground pin, and the other to sync. And that's it. You can see the reading here is about half a volt or 500 millivolts. I'm sure this reading is slightly off, but it's not even close to the maximum safe sync SCART voltage, so there's nothing to worry about here. So that was pretty easy overall, but there's a few ways of making that even easier, plus there's a few other tips and tricks that I want to show before we move on to other examples. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so now that I've thrown you directly into an example, we need to back up for a moment and go over some very important tips. And I think the most important is only use this scope on battery power. It's got a USB-C charging port. However, if you used it while plugged into power, you could have some ground issues that could result in off measurements or some other problems. And it's just not worth taking the risk. So even if you pick this up and the battery is completely dead, let it charge for a couple moments, take your measurements, then put it back on the charger. Also, a lot of the examples that I showed here, after I hit auto, the voltage was set to AC but I double and triple checked the measurements afterwards and they all ended up being fine. So here's the very easy way to manually switch it to DC after hitting the auto button. I'm not sure if it's a huge deal in the context of what we're testing here, but it's good practice and something that I should have paid more attention to. I'm just used to using other scopes that don't really do that. Also, the other thing beginners are really going to want to pay attention to is that when you're testing the RGB video signals from RGB or VGA connections, you're going to need a very specific test pattern in order to get accurate measurements. However, when you're measuring sync, all you need is whatever device you're using powered on and running software or playing a game, and the sync signal will always be at its maximum voltage peak to peak, which is why I use that as an example for the first thing that I showed. But when it comes to testing RGB signals, you'll need an all white screen, 100% color bars, or something very close to get a reading. I'll show more examples of that later, but just remember, you could test sync with any game or software, but RGB testing requires a specific pattern. I'd also like to recommend purchasing some accessories to go along with this kit. First, I'd consider a multimeter a requirement for any basic modding or testing. You don't need anything fancy though. I got this one for $13 and it's totally fine. 
You just need something to test for basic voltage and for continuity so you could trace signals and beep out grounds. You might want to look into purchasing a full resistor kit for future projects, but if you're just going to be testing, you'll need at least a 75 ohm and 100K resistor for video and audio testing. You'll want to aim for 1% tolerance ones, but 5% is probably good enough for this. Also, anything you own that could break out signals from connectors will be a big help. I have a bunch of RCA and 3.5 millimeter connectors that are cut up with the signal wires exposed. This makes attaching probes much easier. In fact, if you have a receptacle SCART connector lying around, or don't mind buying one from a store like Console 5, you won't even need to open the SCART connector of your cables. If you're using SCART cables, I strongly recommend getting at least one of these, as it'll make your life a lot easier. The last accessory I think is a massive help is the RG Bench designed by QWERTY Moto. This accepts a bunch of connectors, has a switch that lets you toggle the 75 ohm load, and comes with a BNC breakout cable that could plug directly into the scope. I know it seems weird to recommend something that's more expensive than the scope itself, but please consider buying one as it will save you so much time and effort. Everything I just showed, including the scope, will be under 150 total, which is pretty awesome considering what you could do, but just the scope, multimeter, and SCART receptacle could be had for around $50, making that an amazing test kit on a budget. Now I'm going to show RGB video testing, and I'll use a SCART receptacle to tap the signals, as it's easier than opening a SCART head and super cheap to buy. Testing RGB video is similar to testing sync, but as shown before, you'll need to have your console or arcade board outputting a test pattern or full color screen. Now I'm just going to reference the SCART pinout, find a ground and video pin, and use the same resistor clip method I showed before. Once I found the right pins, you can see that the voltage is all at a good level, meaning this is totally safe to use, as expected. Now, testing component video, as well as S-Video and Composite, is going to be a different process, and you're going to be looking for different things. But to be honest, in most cases, you wouldn't need to test those signals anyway, because they're all pretty standardized. Unless, of course, you've done some crazy conversion from one to the other. But to be honest, testing those signals would require a completely different video anyway. I already did one of those with Steve from HD Retrovision. However, there is one thing I could mention here. Testing VGA signals is pretty much the exact same thing. All you have to do is make sure that there is the correct pattern on screen when testing the video lines, and just pay attention to the fact that there are two syncs. I show a basic pinout on this page here, but basically VGA breaks its sync out to horizontal and vertical, whereas RGBS is a composite sync, one sync that is a composite of both horizontal and vertical. Now, in this context, there's a few things to note, but you most likely won't need to remember any of this. I'll skim through it really quick anyway. VGA voltage is always going to be higher on the sync lines. However, you almost never need to worry about it because as long as your source and target device are VGA devices, then they're all going to be adhering to that standard. The only time that you would ever have an issue is if you have devices that use that D sub connector that looks like it's VGA. But remember, that's only a connector. Just because you see that doesn't necessarily mean it's VGA. So basically, if you have some console mod where somebody put that connector in, you're still going to need to worry about sync. However, if you're using something like a Dreamcast, and especially going into something like an OSSC with a VGA input, or a VGA CRT monitor, then you would never have anything to worry about. But once again, if you're sync combining or if you're trying to do anything crazy with a mod, you're going to want to double check and just look up the exact voltage specs of whatever you're going from and going to. Now that I've showed a few examples and explanations, I'd like to show what's probably going to be the number one use case for this cheap little scope, testing super guns. Let's first start with sync. Simply connect everything and power it on, once again without a display connected, but with the game running. I'm going to use the RG bench I showed earlier just because of how easy it makes this. No resistor, no alligator clips, I just plug it in and make sure the 75 ohm termination switches are set to on. As you can see, this super gun outputs totally safe sync. Now it's time to test video, and you can continue as is. I'm just going to swap the sync cable connected to the scopes input with the red video cable. While we can't get an accurate measurement this way, we can see how the adjustment works on the super gun. 
This one uses potentiometers for each line, but others might use a dial or multiple dials. Regardless, just turn it until you see the voltage go all the way down. Then bump all three colors up just a hair so you see a signal on the screen. Now you could finally connect your display. If you're using the RG Bench, you'll want to turn the 75 ohm termination off and connect the output to the display like I'm showing here. If you're using probes, just remove the resistor and probe the signals directly. Your display or scaler is now providing the termination, but you could still tap the video signals somewhere. As a note, this is the other killer feature of using the RG Bench. No need to tap around a SCART head to test signals, the RG Bench just passes them through. If you're using an arcade platform that offers an all color or all white screen in the test menu, load that up. Now connect each video signal one at a time and adjust till you see 700 millivolts or 0.7 volts. Obviously, if it's a solid color screen, you'll need to load one that corresponds with the pin that you're testing, so red would be an all red screen, but you could use an all white screen for all three. If your arcade board doesn't offer an all white screen or 100% color bars, you'll kind of need to wing it. Here's an example. Some CPS2 games offer a color screen that's sort of close to 100%. I'll use that and set the voltage to about 650 millivolts. The max brightness voltage this board will output is probably higher, but we're choosing 650 for two reasons. First and foremost, a signal that's too dim can usually be compensated for on the display. Just turn your brightness up. A signal that's too bright starts to wash out and lose color information, so even if you turn your display's brightness down, the detail is still lost. And of course, it's best to send too low voltage than too much. Of course, this is not just about performance, it's about safety. Let's say that color pattern turned out to only be 75% brightness. That means when we calibrate this to 650 millivolts, even the highest brightness the board actually outputs is still probably under the maximum level SCART equipment can handle, even if it is a bit washed out. This is obviously still taking a risk, and you can feel free to go down to as low as about 500 millivolts if you'd like to be safe. And while this might still seem like dangerous guesswork, it's much safer than just eyeballing it or not measuring it at all. Here's a tip. If one of your arcade boards has a test pattern and the other doesn't, just calibrate it with the one that does. There's always going to be a tolerance between different boards, even between the same game. So I would just set the scope no higher than 650 millivolts just to be safe. That way, if one of your boards is a little hotter, you're still under 714. And if one is a little dimmer, you could just bump up the brightness on your TV. Lastly, just note that you'll always want to test the output of your super gun, not the input. The input side is high voltage JAMA and not what your super gun is sending to your TV or scaler. Still kind of cool to check if you're curious though. Testing arcade board audio through a super gun unfortunately requires a lot more guesswork, regardless if you're using some expensive fancy scope or if you're using this one. If you own a super gun that's been properly reviewed and confirmed to have audio voltage protection, there's nothing to worry about and you won't need a scope at all. I've seen an arcade board pass 12 volts of audio and super guns with protection still just output the SCART safe 3 volts. It'll sound terrible cranked all the way up, but the fix is easy. Just turn the volume down until the distortion stops, then bump it down a bit more. I'll explain why that in a second. If your super gun doesn't have voltage protection, you can still use the scope to test, but you're going to be taking a risk. I'll show it anyway here. Start by powering on your super gun and arcade board without connecting a display or scaler using a game that has an attract mode that you know plays sound. I'm going to use the RG bench again as I soldered a basic cable that breaks out audio from the SCART connector right from the RG bench. Then grab your alligator clips and connect a 100k resistor to ground and the audio signal. This will mimic a load just like we did with video. Hit auto on the scope, make sure it's still reading DC at the bottom, and mess around with the volume until you see a low voltage signal. I like to raise it up and down a few times to make sure I'm at a part in the attract mode that's playing sound, then lower it all the way down to zero and bump it up until I just see a signal on the screen. Then I'll give it a try. So that worked, and it should be safe to use, but the volume was pretty low. You could just bump up the arcade board's volume a little bit more, but that could introduce some more issues. Let me explain. 
First, how can you be absolutely sure the audio you're using to test is the maximum audio the game outputs? And that's where this gets tricky. Even with an expensive scope with a lot more options, how can you be sure there isn't a really loud boss battle or something that might send a volume and voltage spike? And that's why I always suggest keeping your arcade board's audio down a little bit more than you probably need to, just because you never know when there's going to be an audio spike that could damage equipment. Overall, I definitely like the Rigel scope better for testing audio as it has the persist option, and I really recommend checking out the video I did about it because there's a lot of good info there. Even if you're not going to buy one, it's still good to know. If I learn more about this scope and find a better way to test audio with it, I'll update the description, pin a comment, and write a detailed post on RetroRGB about how to do it, but I think for now I'll leave you with this. If possible, always try to buy a super gun that has audio protection built right on the circuit, because then you'll never have to worry about safety issues. You just have to worry about tweaking it for sound quality, which is as easy as turning a volume knob on your arcade board. Now, if you already own a super gun without audio protection or that's your only choice, try to keep your arcade board's volume as low as possible where you can still actually hear it. And if you need to buy something to test, this will certainly work a lot better than a basic multimeter. And you can at least get yourself around the range of what is the maximum voltage SCART equipment could handle, which is about three volts. The only other thing to know is if you need to access the service menu to change volume, you might need to desolder or disable the audio output on your super gun or SCART head while adjusting, because you're going to need to connect that to a display to get to it, and you don't want to send high voltage audio through. As I've already mentioned a few times, I really think that this scope is perfectly fine to use for diagnostic work, but I would absolutely never recommend a $30 tool for true development work. Out of curiosity, I wanted to see how it compared to a nice Rigel scope, and the results were really similar. There was a small difference between the two, but not enough to mean the difference between safe and unsafe SCART voltage. The biggest difference was all the options and control the Rigel offers. It saves screenshots, offers precise measuring, and really gives you full control over the signal. On the flip side, the little one gives you a few options, but this really feels like something that was designed for you to just press auto and look at the screen. For everything in the context of this video, that's totally fine, but I absolutely recommend the Rigel for all other scope use. It is a lot more expensive though, so please keep that in mind. For just safety testing, this little one should be totally fine. As of now, I would call this a must buy for people who use arcade boards through super guns, and something I would really strongly recommend for tinkerers in the RGB SCART world. And even if this ends up being something that just sits in your toolbox and you pull it out once a year, I truly think that after the first couple times you use it, you'll find it to be an invaluable tool that really gives you peace of mind that your expensive equipment is going to be safe. Now, as always, I just want to politely remind everybody that all of the information in this video, which was also checked by friends much smarter than me, is how I feel today right now about this. If I find any new test methods or if I change my mind about it, depending on how big of the difference, I might delete this video altogether or I might just pin a comment, add something to descri the description, especially if I end up figuring out an easier way to do audio testing with it. But I always want to be upfront and honest about that because this is the best review to my ability today, but who knows what I'll learn tomorrow. Also, if you liked what you see here and you want to keep this channel going, please consider supporting in any way possible. The monthly support services are what keep this alive, but so do things like using affiliate links, as well as affiliate links that we have on the support page that lets you buy the same stuff that you were going to buy at the exact same price from Amazon and eBay, but we get a very tiny percentage of the profits from those stores, not out of your pocket. So anything you could do to help keep this going would be massively appreciated. And hopefully I'll see you very soon for a next weird and crazy review like this one.